I have an eclectic mix of things today. I just felt like makeup alone is just really not exciting me enough. So I wanted to throw in some skincare, accessories, hair tools, fidget tools, meals, a bunch of different things. And one of the random things I got in PR is the best natural deodorant that I have ever tried. And it's the Athena Club All Day Dio in Super Bloom. And then I think the hero ingredient is diatomaceous earth. According to Google, diatomaceous earth is basically like fossil flower. So it's light colored porous rock composed of diatoms. Diatomaceous Diatomaceous earth is a natural detoxifier that works by absorbing oils and moisture, also aiding in neutralizing odor from sweat. I just think that that's probably the hero ingredient because I've tried so many natural deodorants that have baking soda, that have baking soda alternatives, and they just never seem to work for me. But I swear to you, this actually keeps me smell free. And I'm the kind of person who's just sweating no matter what. If I'm cold, I'm sweating. If I'm hot, I'm sweating. If I'm stressed, I'm sweating even worse. So it's really a struggle for me and I just put all all my money on this being one of the best deodorants that money can buy. So I got a package from Thrive Cosmetics with a liquid lip balm. I ended up not liking the lip balm, but these pillow scrunchies came in the package and it's by a brand called Kitsch. And these are their satin pillow scrunchies and they sent me the colors gray and blush and they're on sale for $14 on their website. The site says satin pillow scrunchies are your newest nighttime necessity and the perfect alternative to traditional elastics. The plush satin material won't crimp or agitate your strands while you sleep, allowing you to wake up frizz free and ready to take on the day. Banish breakage while preserving your hair in pillowy soft comfort. These scrunchies are so huge. I did not think they were gonna work on my fine little hair. I mean, look at my ponytail. This is pathetic. <laughs> And I just didn't think that they were gonna work for me, but I gave them a shot one night and they secure my hair better than any elastic, any scrunchie I've ever tried. Something about them, you can just make them really tight and secure without tugging on your hair. It doesn't put any kinks in your hair when you sleep. When I put my hair in a bun at night, I wake up and I just have a nice little wave and texture to my hair, which is really helpful because I have super silky pin straight hair. And it's interesting because they're so bulky, you would think they'd be really uncomfortable when you're sleeping, but they actually really do kind of feel like an extra pillow for your head. It's really comfortable. I crave sleeping in them. It's just, yeah, a total surprise win. After I filmed this video yesterday, I got a product in the mail and it blew my mind. It's a new launch from Dose of Colors and it's called the It's Literally Magic Multi-Use Shimmer Stick. This is $26 and the website says, introducing the first ever formula of its kind in the US, our It's Literally Magic Multi-Use Shimmer Stick for eyes, lips, and face. This revolutionary water-based formula delivers a refreshing cooling effect and sparkling diamond-like shine with just one swipe. Combining cutting edge technology with luxurious, high quality ingredients, it's a true breakthrough in beauty. This is one of the best glitter products that I've ever tried. I'm so excited about it because it's basically like Urban Decay Space Cowboy in a stick, but with a slight variation in color. So this has a totally transparent base. It just lays down tons and tons of icy silver sparkles. What's great about that is you can put it on top of any eyeshadow you want. In the demo, I was wearing it on top of Armani's Liquid Shadow in 22. It has a slight cooling effect, which which is kind of nice. It doesn't irritate my eyelids or anything like that. It just feels ever so slightly cooling. It's also super smooth and glidey when you apply it. It doesn't feel like gritty or chunky or anything. It literally just feels like you're applying a smooth cooling serum. It's very interesting. And all of that is great, but what really blew my mind was that it had zero fallout and it did not crease or budge for seven hours when I wore it. I mean, I, I don't know what's in this thing, but it literally is magic. I think it's very appropriate named. Unfortunately, I haven't tried the KVD shadow sticks because those had a very strong base pigment and I didn't really like the colors of the base pigment. So I can't compare it to that, but as a standalone product, it's just phenomenal. I mean, look at all that shine. It just, it's got that like wet looking shine. Oh, I can't get enough. That is the only time when I do the influencer shock face. This like actually rocked my world. <laughs> oh, the next favorite I'm so excited about. They're the Half Magic Face Pearls. I'm wearing two of them right now as a little fake eyebrow piercing. Personally, I think they look pretty real. Like I don't think that if you saw me up close, you would think that they're fake. I wanted an eyebrow piercing or a nose ring for my whole life, but I have a collagen deficiency called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome that really interferes with wound healing. So I had five piercings and the only ones that were able to heal were just the regular earlobe piercings. All the other ones I had along my lobe and my cartilage would bleed and pus and form keloids every single time I put earrings in and like literally for 10 years straight. So eventually I just had to accept piercings are not in the cards for me and it sucks because I just, mm, I love a beautiful ear stack. But I'm really excited that brands like Half Magic are coming out with alternatives because honestly, I would rather have this than have to go through the whole process of a piercing anyways. Oh wait, I got something from TikTok. So I got this fake nose ring on TikTok shop. No idea who makes it. 
I'll put it in the description box, but I feel like that looks pretty, pretty legit, right? I mean, I don't think I would guess that it was fake if I saw someone wearing it. That was the fake septum piercing. And then they also have one that goes on the side of the nose that doesn't have the clamp so that it looks more natural. Personally, I feel like the eyebrow actually fits me a little bit better. I always thought that I was gonna get a nose ring, but I think that I'm digging this right now. I think it's really cool. Frankly, I've been super boring when it comes to blush. I've just been layering two blushes for the entire month and basically that's it. Starting with the Persona Dreamstick Cream Blush in Bloom. This has always been my favorite shade of theirs. I just can't get enough of it in the summer months. They're $26 and they're described as an ultra lightweight cream blush multi-stick formulated with skin loving ingredients drag free silky smooth cream that blends and builds like a dream i completely agree with that description it is the silkiest most blendable blush it works with a brush or your fingers it's just so easy to apply and so easy to wear and you would think that something so blendable would just fade super quickly from my face but i actually find that it has decent longevity i also think the shade range of the dreamstick blushes is great they have some really nice light shades for lighter skin tones they have some beautiful, rich, vibrant shades for deeper skin tones, especially the red and the berry. Oh, they're gorgeous. And then they have some browns and some colors in between. I just think the shade range is really well thought out. It, it speaks to my soul. It's one of my all-time favorites, but because I find that it fades, I do like to layer it with a powder on top. And ever since I got the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Radiant Veil Blush in Elysium, that's really been the only combination I've been wearing. It's just such a beautiful peach. They're $34 and the website says, a unique mixture of pearlized powder powders and creams are combined, pressed, and baked for 12 hours, resulting in a fine, radiant, and blendable formula. Three-dimensional quality that reflects a soft focus for a blurring effect on the skin. Multifunctional powder is safe for use on the eyes as an eyeshadow for a monochromatic look. If you followed me for a while, you know that I love this formula. It's in so many favorites videos. It's in so many annual makeup favorites videos. It is by far my favorite shimmer blush of all time because it doesn't accentuate texture like so many other shimmery blushes do. You know, the nature of shimmer is that it's always going to emphasize texture a little bit, but these do it significantly less than other shimmer blushes I've tried. I also love their shade range. I've worn Venetian Rose for years, and I also really like Seraf, which is a new one. It's funny because I've never been a fan of peach and blush or lip products, but I'm slowly starting to dip my toes into the peach world, and I think that Elysium is just the perfect place to start. I've also been working my way through this bad boy very quickly. This is the M Cosmetics Divine Water Perfecting Mist, and M Cosmetics is sponsoring this portion of the video. They wanted me to let you know that after this sold out in 24 hours, it is now back in stock and you can purchase it. And I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. If you wanna win this, just leave your Instagram handle in a comment. That way I can message you and get your information. If you wanna see a full review of this, you can check out my new beauty launches video. I'll leave that in the description box below. This is $38 and they describe it as a luxurious micro mist that delivers 10 benefits in one formula. Infused with hyaluronic acid, peptides, and microbiome ferment, this versatile formula can be used from dawn to dusk for fresh luminosity that lasts all day. You can use this as a setting spray to kind of melt powders together and make your makeup last a little bit longer. You can use it as a refreshing mist throughout the day, whether you're wearing makeup or not. You can use it as a skincare step, as a toner. You can use it to spray your face and prep for makeup. There are a bunch of different ways that you can use it. And basically what it is, is that middle of the road Goldilocks formula where it's not super matte and tight and dry and like super long lasting, but it's also not really greasy and oily and wet looking. It's just right in the middle where I like it to be. M Cosmetics says that this has an orange blossom or neroli scent. Personally, I smell grapes and I really like it. The fragrance is really light. It's hypoallergenic. I haven't noticed any irritation or anything like that. They spent a lot of time developing the mister for this and I can tell. Actually, I should just show you. So if you see, you can hear how there's a decent amount of product, but it just has a really fine mist. So if you want to win Divine Water, just leave your Instagram handle in a comment below. I'll put it into like a random generator. They'll choose a random winner and then I'll message you for your details. On to some random things. I have recently discovered picky pads and I'm telling you it's changed my life. Tiny little backstory, I'll be quick. So back in March, I was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder and they also suspect ADHD. I started realizing as I looked into the world that fidget toys can be really, really helpful for people who are neurodivergent. At first, I started with slime. So my current favorites and fails video from two months ago features slime, and that was what I was really into. Now I've discovered picky pads, and I think they're so much better. Slime was getting a little bit messy for me. Picky pads are basically a bunch of beads suspended in silicone, I think. I bought this one on Etsy for $17.25, and it comes with the refills, and the one without the refills is around $14. They were originally intended for people who have trouble with skin picking and hair picking, but then people realized how beneficial it can be for everybody, even if you aren't neuro 
neurodivergent. A lot of times I have trouble focusing when I'm watching a movie or TV, or if I'm trying to like listen to a lecture or something like that. I just feel like my hands always have to be doing something. And inevitably I'll just always end up reaching for my phone, which is really unhealthy. So now I've discovered fidget tools with my favorite so far being the picky pad. And I can just sit there for hours and pick at this thing and listen. And I, I just have such better concentration. It helps my stress levels. It's just a really great tool. And I think that anyone could benefit from it, whether you're neurodivergent or not. There are so many different sellers on Etsy. They have different sizes, shapes, different colored beads. You can really get whatever you want. I do find though that they're pretty damn pricey for what they are. So I'm going to look into making my own now because as I've purchased a couple different picky pads, I've collected a lot of beads. So I just kind of want to get the molds and then the silicone stuff so that I can make them myself. It's not very sustainable because they do go in the trash. So I'm trying to use other fidget toys and not always have to use the picky pad. But I think I've talked long enough about the picky pad. So let's move on to the stretchy strings. This was featured in Taylor Heaton's channel, her channel's mom on the spectrum. She's actually the person who helped me realize I was autistic in the first place. And she recommended stretchy strings. And it's very similar to slime, except without the mess. I was just feeling like slime was way too messy for me and stretchy strings are similar. You know, you can just kind of stretch them. You can roll them around your hands. You can just play with them however you want, really. And then they just bounce right back and there's no mess. So I got those on Amazon. I don't know who made them, but I'll link them in the description box. In terms of lip products, I have been nonstop reaching for the Lawless Forget the Filler Glosses. And I bought a few shades with my favorites actually being the ones that are not on Sephora. You can only get them on the Lawless website. They're $26 and the website says a clinically proven lip plumping treatment and ultra shiny gloss with immediate and long-term visible plumping, softening, and hydrating benefits. Immediately, lines look filled and the lip surface looks smooth. So I saw that Lawless was having a huge sale about a month or two ago, and I used that as an opportunity to buy about five different lip products. And the glosses are just fantastic. They're right up my alley. They're a thick, slightly sticky, ultra glossy, ultra smoothing gloss. And the applicator is curved. It just beautifully hugs your lips and gives you this really comfortable application. I've actually owned the shade Velvet before, and I had to throw it out because this is a clean beauty brand. They don't use preservatives. And so the glosses do expire very quickly. So that's a huge, huge con that you should be aware of, but they are just one of the best lip glosses I've ever tried. Product that seems to fill in the appearance of lip lines. And so it just gives you this really glossy, very smooth effect versus a lip product where you can really see all of your lip texture. And I tend to find that the thicker lip products are the ones that are the most smoothing. So for me, it's the Lawless Forget the Filler Glosses, the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balms, the Nature Republic Honey Melting Lips, and the Give Beauty Collagen Lip Oils. I mean, when you can have a product that makes your lips look more youthful and plump and flattering, like why would you want to reach for anything else? I also have been really impressed with Lawless's shade range. When they first launched, I was very critical of them online about the fact that they kept launching very very, very light shades that really would only work on people with pretty fair skin. And I thought that was a bit problematic. Since then, they've gone on to launch a lot more shades. They don't have a ton of deep shades yet. It's definitely not a balanced shade range, but they are definitely starting to go in that direction. And so that's a good thing. There are actually 19 shades of the Lawless Forget the Filler Gloss, but Sephora only carries a few of them. So I definitely recommend just going and shopping the Lawless website. They also have really helpful pictures of each shade. I feel like it's one of the only companies that was representing their colors accurately. And I'll pull a picture from the website of the Lawless Glosses. I just feel like you can really see on all skin tones what they look like. And I have to applaud them for that. I also picked up the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Tinted Balm Stick in the shades Lover and Posy. These are $26 and the website says, the perfect pairing of a clinically proven lip treatment with a gorgeous wash of color. Tinted Balm Stick offers the same special plumping ingredient as our overnight lip mask with a beautiful tint of color and a convenient portable stick. Powered by Maxi Lip Rosehip Oil, shade butter and jojoba seed oil to strengthen lips moisture barrier while keeping lips smooth, soft, and supple all day long. So I actually held off buying these for a very long time because I saw a lot of reviews saying that they were just really stiff and dry and obviously I didn't want to waste my money. But my friend Devin Jessmer, who's a beauty creator on Instagram, I'll link her in the description box below, she sent me one of the shades and I ended up loving it. I was so surprised. So then I had to buy one because I just thought, wow, this is a formula I've been sleeping on. Nobody has been raving about these, at least not in my bubble. I will say, I do agree with people. It is quite a stiff balm. I don't really feel like it's super hydrating or moisturizing. I think 
think of these more just like a comfortable lipstick. And I actually like that they're a little bit more stiff because I find that when something's super stiff, it's really easy to apply it very sheerly and they tend to have more grip. So they're not slippery. They don't slide outside the lip lines. I like that they have like a little bit more body to them. They also have that same scent. It's like strawberry with maybe a teensy little hint of mint. Very, very subtle cooling effect. I would say on par with Hourglass or actually probably more subtle than Hourglass. I would disagree with the fact that they're line smoothing. This does not give me that smoothing effect like the Lawless glosses do. Maybe they're talking about skincare ingredients that are supposed to help with appearance over time. I don't really know if that's true. Like I, I just, I'm not gonna be wearing this product enough, I think, to see long-term skincare benefits, you know what I mean? But if you just think about them as a really comfortable, beautiful, balmy lipstick, then I think your expectations will be in the right place. I should have known that something everybody seemed to dislike would be the thing that I'd fall in love with. And I also thought that this one had a really nice shade range too. Again, I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see how the shades look on different skin tones. I really like this representation. I feel like I can see the texture of the lips. I can see the colors accurately. So I'd really like to see more brands doing this. In terms of eyeshadow, I've basically just been wearing two for the entire summer. It's hot as balls in Ojai in the summertime. Like it's gotten up to like 103, 104 here, which is something I'm not super used to. So wearing a lot of makeup has just not been my vibe, especially not complexion products or eyeshadow. My favorite liquid eyeshadow of all time is the Armani liquid eyeshadow in 22. They're $38 and the website says they're a long lasting crease proof liquid eyeshadow in multiple finishes with up to 16 hours of buildable color and a lightweight feel. So this is my favorite liquid eyeshadow formula ever. I'm actually about to run out of this. I don't think I've ever run out of a liquid eyeshadow in my life before. I use this on an almost daily basis, at least almost every time I do my makeup. It's a very thin cream formula, but somehow still so smooth and even in pigment. And you get a ton of blend time before they set down. And that's really important for me because I do not have great eyeshadow skills as I'm sure you've all noticed. And so having something that gives me more blend time before it sets allows me to really help clean up my mistakes. And then once they set, they absolutely do not budge. And I think because they're so thin, it, it kind of like sits on the skin a little bit better, you know, versus like a thicker formula that might crumble off a little bit more. You know, this is the kind of situation where you've got a luxury product and I would absolutely pay big bucks for this because it is just above and beyond better than any other liquid eyeshadow. And so that's what I use all over the lid, blended up to the brow bone and under the crease as a one and done shadow. And then on top, pretty much every B-roll clip you see where I'm applying products, I'm wearing Armani 22 with Urban Decay Space Cowboy on top. It's just a classic for a reason. So the Urban Decay 24-7 Moon Dust Shadows are $24 each. And the website says they're a high performance eyeshadow that's packed with micro fine glitter for the most sparkly, supercharged color and shimmery finish up to 16 hours. This combination together is just so beautiful because Armani 22 is that perfect neutral matte brown for my skin tone. And then Urban Decay Space Cowboy just has a little bit of that sheer peach base contrasted by the silver glitter. And I just feel like it gives you the biggest impact. This combination is what really makes me feel my prettiest. And because it goes with every makeup look, like every blush, every lip product, I always end up wearing this when I'm filming B-roll for my channel. So if you wanna know what I'm wearing, that's it. So I have a little skincare update for you. I have been working with an esthetician at Sophie Pavitt since early May. I purchased their acne consultation program for $400 and they have completely overhauled all of my skincare products. I'm following all these different instructions every day about how to heal my acne and I have made major, major improvements thanks to them. It was an expensive program, but so far very worth it. The first one that I believe has made the biggest difference is the Sophie Pavitt Mandelic Clearing Serum. It's a little pricey, it's $54, but man, because this works so well, I'd pay whatever for it. It says that it's a three-in-one exfoliating active serum that smooths, hydrates, and protects. The Mandelic Clearing Serum is a gentle yet highly effective exfoliator formulated with 8% mandelic acid, hyaluronic acid, and panthenol. So part of the Sophie Pavitt program is I had to stop all active ingredients, no vitamin C or antioxidant serums, no peptide serums, no tretinoin, no epidua forte. I had to stop all of it and only use these few serums, a moisturizer, cleanser, sunscreen, that's it. So basically, all of my favorite skincare products have been pushed aside. And I'm on this program for a minimum of four months, but occasionally I will kind of take a break so that I can test skincare products. But for the most part, my routine is extremely minimal now. And this Mandelic Serum is incredible because I was on Tret and Epidua Forte before. I thought that my skin was getting the proper cell turnover from those products. But it turns out if you have acneic skin, you really need a gentle exfoliation every day. I just thought that because I had sensitive skin, I could never handle that. But the Mandelic Clearing Serum is so 
so gentle. I mean, it doesn't even feel like an exfoliator to me. And then now two months in, they have me alternating the clearing serum, which is 8%, with the Face Reality 11% Mandelic Serum. And that one's definitely more intense. I can feel it kind of tingle a little bit on my face, so my skin's just getting used to that one, and I'm alternating them every day. The Face Reality Mandelic Serum is about $44, but I highly recommend starting with one that's more gentle and then working your way up like they've had me do very, very slowly. I will say the Face Reality one also has like a really gross smell, so just a heads up on that, but obviously I'm sticking to the routine that they want me to do. And then at night, every single night, all over my face and neck, I wear the Face Reality 2.5% Acne Med. And guess what? They don't even allow me to wear moisturizer at night. For two months, no moisturizer. Only in the morning am I allowed to wear moisturizer. It's been the weirdest mental shift for me because I'm the kind of person who would go to bed like slugging my face, just dripping in moisturizer. And really they just wanna dry up the skin and not give acne a chance to form. So for my nighttime routine, after I cleanse my face, they have me apply any hydrating serum I want. They approved the Peach and Lily uh, Glass Skin Serum. And then I follow it with the Face Reality Acne Med. And that's just a 2.5% benzoyl peroxide serum. And that's it, it's crazy, so minimal. It saved me so much money and my skin looks better than it has in a long time. And I will say though, I cheat and I put moisturizer on my forehead, my eyelids and under my eyes because I don't break out there and that's really where I get the most fine lines. So I cheat a little bit there, but from my lower face down, no moisturizer at night. I also have a recipe to share because I posted it on Instagram and people like went crazy for it. We just kind of improvised this Greek inspired open faced pita sandwich. And what's great about it is you just spread ground turkey on the pita and then you fry it in a pan. What's great for me is that I have quite regularly an aversion to meat. Meat and eggs are just really, really difficult for me. Apparently that's very common for people who are on the spectrum. So I have found that like ground meats or any meat that's like chopped really fine is a lot easier for me to put down. But if I fry it and it's crispy, I can eat meat all day. Then I make a tzatziki sauce. I'll leave the recipe linked below. Just spread that on the pita, top it with cucumbers, red onion, tomato, green pepper, and uh, feta. You can also add like black olives or whatever. You can do whatever you want, but it is so good. Hi Thumper. Hi. I'm gonna show everybody what you look like cause you're such a good boy. Oh, how's my sweet boy? Let's go say hi to Thumper. Hi honey. How you doing? Did you just wake up from a nap? Yeah, you did. Oh yeah. Wanna say hi to YouTube? You wanna say hi? Okay, you can go ahead. The boy. <laughs> I have one product that's not a favorite nor a fail, but it's a new launch and I just kind of wanted to like sneak it into this video. And I really like it. It's just not quite a love. It's the new Ellis Brooklyn perfume in Dear Sky. You can get it for $110 full size or $30 travel size and it's a fruity floral. The website says Southwest Skies, crystal prisms and radiant energy. Dear Sky is an ode to the American West, the wild souls that seem to light and blaze their own paths. A modern fruity floral, Dear Sky sparkles with honeydew melons, strawberry leaf, white peony, and galbanum. So the full notes are bergamot essence, rhubarb, honeydew melon, strawberry leaf, tuberose, white peony, pink pepper, ombre, galbanum, and upcycled cedar wood. So first of all, the bottle is beautiful. I would say Ellis Brooklyn as a brand has aesthetically the perfume bottles that speak to me the most. They're just very simple, minimal, and then just different colors for each one. I, I love the design. They sent me this in PR and I was really excited about it because I live in Southern California in a very small town called Ojai and the American West just really spoke to me. I wanted a perfume that kind of encompassed my experience and it's close, not quite there. So to me, I really just smell rose and like a hint of strawberry, cedarwood, and uh, I'm gonna look at my notes, pink pepper. Yeah, I wrote down that I think if I smelled all of the notes, then I would probably feel like it's a little bit more evocative of that American West experience. But rose is the only one that I really gravitate towards because it just, it smells a lot like softer and more fresh than most other florals do, at least on my skin chemistry. Ellis Brooklyn Sunfruit is my signature fruity floral scent because it's more on the fruity side, but I think that this is definitely one that I'm gonna keep. It's just not my like top, top, top favorite. Okay, now let's get into some fails and I'm gonna start with something that makes me physically angry and it's the Prada Moisturizing Lip Balm in Astral Pink. So they sent this to me in PR and it's $50. It's a moisturizing lip balm that smooths lips, supports the lip barrier and offers up to 24 hours of lip comfort. So this pissed me off 
stuff and I didn't even spend money on it. It's a lip balm that's about as effective as a $3 chapstick. In fact, it actually feels exactly the same, which is really not a texture that I find nourishing at all. It just doesn't do anything for my lips. Obviously the packaging is absolutely stunning and you're paying for that in the luxury brand name. It has weighted packaging, so it feels really luxurious and heavy. It has a magnetic cap. So you are definitely getting that luxurious experience that you want when you're paying that much money. However, that's really where my positive feedback ends. It really just feels the same as like a $3 chapstick and I don't ever find that kind of product effective. It has the most overpowering floral perfume smell and taste. It is just like, ugh, I can't get it off my mouth fast enough. And it just, it gets in your mouth and it, it feels like you just sprayed perfume directly into your mouth. It's just not what a luxury experience should be to me. Although I know that luxury perfume is very often associated with floral perfume. And that's typically why you don't see me review a lot of luxury makeup on my channel. Not only that, I mean, I think the blue color is fun. It turns this pink shade. They claim that it's pH reactive, but I always feel like that kind of marketing is a little bit bullshit. They always say, you know, it adjusts to your natural pH and it flushes the perfect shade for you. And that's misleading because it really always just flushes like a sheer neon pink. I've never seen those products look different on anyone else. So you may like this if you're a luxury beauty lover, you don't mind, you know, that typical designer floral perfume smell and you like a pH adjusting product. Uh, but I think for most of us, this one would be a, a solid skip. Mm, another one that just didn't work out for me, the Live Tinted Hue Glow Blush Crushes Liquid Blushes. These are $22 and they're described as a creamy liquid blush that easily blends and builds for naturally flushed flirty cheeks that last all day. Four creamy shades designed for all hues. Bro, this took me on a journey. So at first I applied it as normal and I blended it with a brush, but I quickly realized this is a very dewy, very oily formula. And since I was wearing the Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation, which is matte and it's self-setting, basically sets to a powder finish, the oily blush completely broke apart the foundation and it was a disaster. Like this blush is not meant for a heavy base, a matte base or powder. In fact, I don't even really think that it's meant for any foundation at all. It basically like performed as a cleansing oil on my cheeks. So that was a disaster. I tried building it up and I just found that it got so much worse and I quickly realized that I just needed to do something different. So I grabbed some makeup wipes, I took my foundation off and instead I applied the Makeup Forever HD Glow Foundation because that one's quite dewy and I felt like it had a similar texture to the Live Tinted blushes. And then I applied the blush on top of that feeling really hopeful and positive, but it just did not look good. I truly think you just can't really wear these over foundation. I think they're much more of a no makeup makeup product. Um, in fact, they actually remind me almost exactly of the M Cosmetics Serum blushes, which also did not work out for me. Uh, whereas the M Cosmetics blushes though were very sheer, these do have quite a bit of pigment to them, except for the shade Love Language, that one's very sheer. So I would say if you tried the M Cosmetics Serum blushes and you loved them, but you found that they were a little too sheer, you might really be the consumer for the Live Tinted Blush Crushes. You may like them if you have really, really dry skin and you just love a dewy cheek, or if you're a no makeup makeup person and you just want a blush that really just looks like skincare, I can see how this might be the product for you. For me though, it, it's a disaster. It's just not, it doesn't work with my base. It doesn't work with my makeup style. Um, it's way too dewy. It feels too oily for me. So unfortunately it's just not the one. So I'm a little bummed about that, but I get it. I mean, dewy finish is like what everybody wants. A sad update on a product that I previously gave a positive review to. So the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun SPF 50. It's $14.40 on sale at YesStyle right now. And the website says fitted with broad spectrum SPF 50 PA++++ to fend off UVA and UVB rays. This organic sunscreen comes in a lightweight cream texture that absorbs quickly into the skin without leaving a white cast. The chemical sunscreen contains niacinamide to leave your skin glowing. Additional ingredients of rice extract and grain derived probiotics help keep skin supple and hydrated. I'm so bummed about this one because I can never find a chemical sunscreen that doesn't sting my face. And before you make suggestions, trust me, I've tried them. I've tried all the best ones from Korea. I've tried all the best sunscreens from Australia. Every chemical filter irritates my face. That's just how it is. That's just the skin that I'm born with. The Relief Sun was the first one that didn't irritate my skin. And so I love the texture. It's this lightweight cream texture. Kind of feels like it would just be a moisturizer, but then it sets down to a matte finish. And at first when I was testing this product for like the first month, I wasn't wearing it every day. And so I thought that when it was making me feel dry, I thought it was just the skincare that I had on 
one underneath. And now I've been trying to use it up. So I've been wearing it every day and I realized, oh, it's the sunscreen. It makes my face feel so tight and dry. And you know, I'm also on this Sophie Pavitt acne routine. That could be another factor of, you know, why my skin feels a little bit more dry. I'm only having to wear like very, very, very lightweight moisturizers. Whereas before Sophie Pavitt, I was wearing really rich moisturizers. So it could have something to do with that. But when I posted about it on Instagram, I got so many messages from people saying that it made them dry as well. So I think it is the sunscreen. And my last fail of the month is a new launch, sadly from Tower 28. They launched their SOS Gentle Hydrating Gel Cleanser and Makeup Remover. It's $20. And the website says it's a gentle daily cleanser with the power to do everything you want, AKA easily remove makeup, SPF oils and dirt without burning eyes or leaving skin tight. So this is just a really basic fragrance-free cleanser and it's just okay. Like it leaves me feeling, you know that squeaky clean feeling where your, your skin just feels like way too stripped? That's how this leaves me feeling. And so I just didn't love it because it claims to do the exact opposite. And I also noticed quite a few reviews on Sephora saying the same thing. Also a bunch of my friends had written on their Instagram stories. They felt like it made them feel a little bit tight. So I just feel that when you have a very basic cleanser that's $20, I could buy a bigger bottle of the CeraVe Foaming Facial Wash, which is $18. And that one's a more hydrating cleanser for me. I much prefer it. Even people with very oily, acneic skin don't want their skin to be stripped. You always wanna make sure that you your skin's hydrated even when you have acne. So yeah, this one, I just, I think it's a pass. Oh, I had an update from my beauty launches video. So um, if you haven't seen it, I reviewed the Kofi Lassie Lips lip stains and they're great, great product. You can watch that video if you wanna review. But I did some more research on the ones that were leaking and um, apparently it's only the shade Black Cherry, which is unfortunate because I think it's one of the best shades. So this is the top of the tube and I think you can see on this little pigment right here, this is where it leaks. So weirdly, it leaks from the top and it like leaks all from the top down, which is very bizarre. And I spoke to a lot of people who said they had the same issue. I've now had three friends say that Black Cherry was leaking from the top. So I feel confident saying that this was a great product and I stand by the formula, but I would possibly avoid the shade Black Cherry for the time being. And if you're watching my content, I appreciate each and every one of you. I hit 60,000 on YouTube today and I'm so excited about it. My channel has been a slow and steady grind. Even every little milestone is something that I just celebrate because I could never imagine 60,000 people in one place. It's crazy to me that that many people want to watch my videos. I just feel really grateful for all of you. I feel like I'm finally starting to find my place on YouTube and like what I want my content to be. So if you've been watching my videos, thanks so much. And I hope wherever you are, you're having a great day.